Hello, I've been struggling the past little while with PSO caching and I finally figured out how I think it works so I thought I'd make a video to explain it. So what is PSO caching? It's pipeline state object caching uh, in Unreal Engine it's used to reduce hitches and load times um, of shaders. So they have a documentation page here that has a number of uh, little things you can look at and you can follow but as you try to follow them, you will find uh, a lot of questions and a lot of issues. So to get this to work, we're going to use my uh, Castlevania project here, which runs on Android. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do to get PSO caching to work um, is to go into your project and to edit your Android engine.ini file. Apparently, it's empty. There we go. So you can see here, Android Engine.ini has devoptions.shaders needs shader stable keys in it. If this is not there, then it won't generate the shader stable keys that you will need to use to convert your PSO files you're going to generate in a minute here. So you have to have this. Um, so your question may you may ask is you're going to look at your project and you're going to realize that there's no platforms folder. If there isn't, just make it. Just make platforms, Android, config, Android engine.ini and just put this information in there. Okay? So you may not have the folder already. If you don't, just make it. Um, and if you look on this page, I believe, Here's where they talk about it, but they don't tell you that you might have to make the file yourself. Anyway, so once you've done that, you're going to need to make a, uh, a project launcher profile that's going to run your game um, with PSO logging on. Okay, so if we edit this profile, here's one I made for that. Um, some reason it lost where my project was. So I'll point it back at that. So you want to use your project. I just leave it in development. Um, you have to choose which uh, type of cooking you want. Uh, Android ASTC is what I chose and you have to choose cooking by the book. Um, and your question may be, well how do I know which type of cook to use? And what I did to, to know that was just to look at the default. So if you look here on my Pixel 2 it's going to use Android ASTC, so that's why I chose it. So, if we edit this profile here, we use Android ASTC. I'm going to cook all the maps. Um, don't need to package it. We're just going to deploy it to my Pixel 2 as an Android ASTC variant, right? And then down here, here's the critical part. You have to add dash log PSO down here as your command line parameter. So this is going to tell it to log the uh, PSO cache file. All right. So once we've done that, um, and remember we have our uh, Android uh, engine.ini set up, um, we can just launch. So I got my phone handy here. So we will launch the game. And uh, once the game launches, how this works is you're supposed to play through the game normally and it will generate uh, all the shader cache info um, as, you, as you play. So it's like that way it'll know the order in which to load the shaders. So right now it's uninstalling it. I'll just play a little bit of the game to generate the file first. That will be, that will be my plan. Um, let me delete this folder here. Yeah, all right. So it should be running in a second here. So it's removing it. So it's doing all this with ADB, right? Android, Android debug bridge, which is how you communicate.
It really takes a long time to remove it sometimes. And I have not figured out why. Okay, right, there we go. There we go. So now it's running on my phone, as you can hear. So I'm gonna play just a few seconds here to generate the file. Okay, so now if I cancel this run, it can be done. And we can close this. Now, you can go here to my PC. And if you look, here's my device, the Pixel 2. And if you go to UE4 game, the name of your project twice saved, you will see a folder now called Collected PSOs. It will have a file in there. You want to copy that into a folder you make in the root like that. Maybe. It, it did not copy it. Alright, so I'm going to unplug my phone. I'll plug it back in. And I'm going to turn on file sharing again. Let's see if it lets me copy that file. Pennsylvania saved. Okay. Copy. Paste. There we go. All right. So we now have that file copied, right? Okay. Right. So the next step that we need is we need to build it, but we have to copy some more files here. So let's go to our project folder. And if you go into saved, cooked, you'll have a folder for uh, your, the thing you just ran, right? You want to get Castlevania metadata pipeline caches, and you will have these files here now. Okay, so let's copy these and put those in that folder as well. Okay. So now, let's just go ahead and minimize this stuff. We're going to have to call um, an engine executable. So this executable is going to be where your engine is. So I'm going to go to 426 engine binaries Win64 and we need UE4 editor dash command. Yep. So let's create a shortcut. Okay. Now if we go to the properties of this Let's just copy the target. And I'm going to open this. I'll just make a new file in Visual Studio Code here so that we can see what I'm doing. So here is what um, I'm doing. So we're going to have to add some stuff to this target to, to run, to, to cause it to, to build this, right? Um, so we're going to need a link to our project file. So let's make a new folder. It's the first argument. So go to my project. There we go. And copy the path of that. So copy that. Yep. So that's your first argument is your new project file. Then we have to do dash run equal to shader. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Here, let's let's go to the web page where they show you how to do it. Um, and yeah, here's here's their command line. So I'm just going to copy that to start with. Right. 
So you see here, here's the first argument is the name of the project. So let's just go ahead and skip that part. So there we go. So what is happening here? So we're going to call that executable. We're going to tell it to run on that project. We're going to tell it to run our shader pipeline cache tools and expand where we are in CPSO caching, right? These pipeline cache files into some new ones. And then it's going to name it this that thing at the end. So this is a problem. This name, you need to make sure it matches your project, right? So let's change this. And if you look over on the left side here, look at how these are named. So you see it's Castlevania GL SL underscore ES3 underscore one Android. So that's going to be OK, I think. If you get the name wrong, um, it won't work, but there's a way to tell. So um, let's do that first. OK, so let's save it. Oh, wait, no, not save it. Let's copy it. And edit this again. And we'll change our target to that. OK, now let's try running it. I'm just going to run it as an illustrator. OK, here we go. It's... <laughs> Thought I saw failed. <laughs> let's see. It almost would be better to just do it like this, wouldn't it? Right. And then let's run it from here. I'll let oh, okay. So let it wrote the stable PCS file. So that's the file that we want. Castlevania GLES 3.1 Android stable that CSV. So you might think, well, okay, it, where is it? It didn't appear in this folder, right? And it doesn't. It puts it in with the binaries. So let us go find it. So if we go into File Explorer, Go back to the engine. Binaries, Win64. Remember, because here's where we called that executable from. So now if we go in here and we search for startup CSV, see here's our file. So let's move that here. All right, so all that work to generate this file, right? Now that we have that file, what do we do with that? Okay, so we have to put it in our project in a specific location. Let's go to your project, go to build, go to your platform. And then, actually, I think it's Android. Yeah, build Android. Now we need to make a folder. Pipeline caches. All right, now let's put it in there. Now that we have done that, so it's in Castlevania build Android pipeline caches. Let's go back to our game here. All right, now if we run on the device, oh, which, speaking of that, I forgot to talk about one other thing you have to do to make it um, actually generate the PSO cache file.
So to do that, I have to go into here and go into the uh, wait, window, developer tools, device profiles. Okay. So you have to generate this file. And then you go down into Android. And you have to add this. So in Android, under console variables, you have to have r.shader pipeline cache enabled set to one. Otherwise, it will not um, it will not generate the file. So once you have done that, I'll show you. You got to make sure that this appears. So we go into your config, default device profiles ini. You go down under Android. You need to make sure that this is set. Okay. Otherwise, that pipeline cache file will not show up at all. Um, anyway, so, um, and if it doesn't show up at all, um, you, you can always go to your device. And um, you can look at saved logs. And this log file will actually show you um, where it failed to save. It'll be like down here when you started playing the game. It'll say failed to save. Um, oh, look. Like that. Let's see. Oh, look. It saved it there. So it failed to save it once, and then it saved it. So anyway, you can look in your log to make sure that it worked. Um, you can also look, so like, I know I'm getting on a tangent here. If you find in files, You can see here where um, where it failed uh, in the engine, and you can see what it's checking. Um, it checks this command line, and it checks this other value here. Um, no, let me show you. There it is. It checks these two C bears, right? Shader pipeline cache enabled, and shader pipeline log PSO. So. Otherwise, it will throw out trying to do that. Um, so anyway, generated the file, all that. If we go to build with the project now, we should see that it's using it. Let's, let's watch for some information here. I don't know why it has to redo some shaders here. But it might be related to turning on that file. So if I search for... So if you look here, if you search for pipeline, shader cache tools, See, look, it says it's loading that file. See? So if something went wrong, you would see here. Right? So make sure you check your log shader pipeline cache tools, which will tell you whether or not your, fault, your file was in the right location and that it was named the right thing. That's how you can check.
So once you've done that, then you should be good. Um, once it deploys to my phone here, we can check the phone log and make sure that it loaded in there too. Let's turn on the phone. Oh man, it takes so long to do this part. So let's let's just reiterate uh, how you do this, right? So the first thing you do is you make yourself with Windows Developer Tools device profiles. You, you go in here and use this to tell Android to log to um, enable the uh, that one console variable, right? Okay, I loaded my game um, once. Once you've loaded that console variable, um, you've turned on this ability to do this right. Then you make a, um, a launch profile with the project launcher to tell it to log the PSO file, right? Then once you log the PSO file, you copy it to your hard drive in a specific location so that you can copy the shader stable keys there, then use that engine binary to combine them. Then once you've used your engine, the engine binary to combine them, you have to go find the file and then you have to move it in the right location. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot of a lot of things to go wrong here. So anyway, so the game's now running on my on my device, and uh, I didn't I didn't notice anything, of course. Um, so I'm going to cancel this and let us go to the device again, and hopefully we can see in the logs that it looks like it was using it. All right, so let's minimize all of this to make it easier to see what's happening here. All right, so did it use the PSO cache? Let's see. Ah, okay, so I searched for PSO, and if you see here, it says open pipeline cache, and here it um, set the base record for it. Here it opened the cache file with eight entries and it used it for pre -compile. So I believe this means that it worked. <laughs> um, I don't see anything else that would make me think it isn't. Right? Um, I wonder if there's like a pipeline. Let's see. Yeah. So it read that file, it opened the file. Yeah. Right there. And it completed it here. And it batched, I guess it paused batched, it resumed. Think, I think that that worked. Um, so, so what should that do? That that should make it um, load faster um, as you transition levels and stuff. Um, and I know that there's even more things you can do. So let's talk about that real quick, which I, I didn't show. Um, if you look at the PSO caching documentation, um, there's where they talk about how you um, show a loading screen and pause the batching and resume the batching. So you can look at that here, which I didn't do. Um, but if you truly had a lot of stuff to load, you'd probably want to show a loading screen um, the first time this PSO cache gets built. Um, anyway, if you get this to work, or if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, if you know more than I do, please let me know as well. Thanks.